Hey, it's Luke. One of the questions that I've gotten the most on the live streams I've been doing about the Ableton Move is about presets and if you're able to move them from Ableton Live onto the Move. And yes, you can, but it's a little convoluted. So I'm gonna walk you through it. I haven't done this yet. I've been waiting until I did this video. So let's learn about this together. First, let's look at what we can put onto the Ableton Move. It's pretty limited. And if you've been using the Move for a while, you probably know these limitations. You can use drum racks, you can use drift, and you can use wavetable. On here, they don't mention wavetable at all. So I don't know if that hasn't been built into it yet, but at a minimum, we can use the drum rack and we can use drift, and that can let us do a whole bunch of stuff. So we can't just drag a preset from Ableton Live onto the Ableton Move. That would be really nice, but it has to be in a certain format, which is the a, B, whatever's used on Ableton Note, but it's pretty easy to create them once we do the setup with the options.txt that we're about to look at. So these are the limitations. It has to be in an instrument rack, which is easy to do, I'll show you in a minute. And if your preset is gonna be a drum track, you'll use a drum rack, but it has to be set up as drum samplers instead of simpler on each pad. That's easy to do as well. Even if you have it set up as simpler, you can just convert it, we'll look at that too. You can have one return chain with one effect in it and one insert effect. If you're using Drift, it's the same instrument rack. It looks like you can have an instrument rack with map macros in there, which is sort of nice. And then you've got Drift and an insert effect and another insert effect. So I guess this one you have two insert effects. Okay, they show it here, that's sort of nice. And the effects that you can put on there is a little bit limited as well, but if you've been using the Ableton Move, you're sort of used to seeing these. You can put the channel EQ, the chorus ensemble, the delay, the phaser flanger, the redux, reverb, and the saturator. So there are a few steps we have to do. The first is to create or add to the options.txt file. If you don't know what that is, it's just a text file that you put in your Ableton folder, and it lets you do some special stuff that is built into Ableton Live, but isn't officially a setting in Ableton Live. If that makes sense. I just want to show you what it'll look like before you set up the options.txt file. So if you go to your drum rack, you can just go to group and that'll create an instrument rack. So if you right click on this section here, or if it's expanded anywhere, basically on the outside of this device, you right click and you can see a bunch of options here, show preset names, lock to control surface, which you may not have if you don't have Ableton push, but copy max for live path and save as default preset. That's all we have on this menu, but this is where that's gonna show up in a minute. Okay, now that we know what we're working with, let's set it up. So all the way down at the bottom of this page, there's actually a default options.txt file. There's a drum rack template and a drift template. So we're gonna download all three of these. Okay, so I have them here. This options.txt file is actually a really simple file. It's just one line. If you're already using an options.txt file for something else, you will want to add this to whatever file you've got set up. And you wanna have no trailing spaces, no, no space at the beginning, nothing at the end, and all on one line, and it always starts with a hyphen or minus. So one thing I noticed is they don't have the capital O. I don't think it's case sensitive, but I'll throw it on there just to make sure. This is probably the most complicated part of what we're gonna need to do is you have to be able to access the folder where you wanna drop it. And the reason it's a little complicated is it's usually a hidden folder. Here on the Mac, when you're in Finder, you go to this option here that says go, and I think it's getting cut off on the screen. So if we quit this, okay, so we hold down alt or option as we go down to library here. So it'll bring you to this folder, which is users, your username and library. And then you wanna go all the way down to preferences. And then you want to go into Ableton Live and whichever version you're using right now, which is something sort of annoying with the options.txt file. Every time you update Ableton Live, you have to copy it into the new folder it creates. It's not ideal, but that's what we have to work with. <laughs> so we'll throw it in here. So this is the file here. We're going to drop it into this folder. And then once we reload Ableton Live, 
Hopefully, it'll show up in the menu. Okay, so we'll want to go back to that preset we just created, which will be this one here. And if everything goes right, once we right click here, there we go, export as move note preset. So right now there's nothing in it, but that's how we're gonna be able to bring it on to the Ableton move. So the first thing we should do, I guess, is create a preset. We might, let's load one of these. So this default actually has some sounds on it. So let's just try bringing it in as is. So we're gonna go to this, export as move and note preset. Let's do, sure, on the desktop, we'll do uh, test video Ableton move. So it'll be the same thing with this drift template. Let's drop it on a new track. So we have drift here, so we can do anything we want to these parameters here. There should be an effect at the end. Did they forget these in swap for other move? note compatible FX. Oh, okay. I guess that's a note to us to let us know that we can swap that out for something else. So as we mentioned earlier, you have two effects that you can have on this preset. We can try it just to see. I think the saturator was one of them. So we're going to go with audio effects here, drop this here and I guess we'll get rid of this one. And for this one, we'll go back to the list to see what our options were. So we can choose Redux. And nope, that's not what we want. Actually, we'll just do a hot swap here. There we go. So this preset should be ready to go. We can save it here and we can name it. Oh no, that's right. We don't want to do that. We want to go here and export as a move note preset and do on the desktop again. So we'll do drift test preset. So those two should be saved now. So what we're going to do is get the Ableton move and start transferring stuff over. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in here and we're going to go to move.local. And it'll ask us for a number. I'm going to get the Ableton move and we're going to set it up. Okay. I've still got this awkward setup where this is sort of in the way. I've got a new solution for this and I'm going to get it soon. Apparently it's been purchased for my birthday, but we'll take this number here, 284052. And then we're logged into the move manager. We'll want to go to presets here, upload, and actually move these into their own folder. So these two presets here are the ones we want. I think we can do them both at once. Here they are. So hopefully they show up on here now and let's find out. So we'll create a new set here. So go to this first track that's already a drum rack, but we want to replace it with ours. And we're going to go back here, all the way to the top back here. And I think it should be here at the bottom, user presets. There we go. Drift test preset. So that's the drift one. And then test video. I think this is going to be the drum rack here. And there we go. We have that. It's not playing anything, so something's not right. Let's load up the drift one first. Maybe we have to do something to get the samples over. So if we do the drift one, that one does work. I didn't connect the audio, so you won't really hear it, but um, yeah, we're good. This does work. And these effects here, should be the two that we set up earlier, the saturator and the redux. So they work perfectly. They seem to write a sentence for us. Map, drift, parameters to see them on move and note. So that's the thing. We didn't set up any of the macros, but once we set those up, they will show up here saying whatever it is that we call them. So we can have these control whichever parameters we want on the drift, it'll work. Now we got to figure out why this drum rack wasn't working though. It didn't bring in the samples. If we go back into Ableton Live, 
So we can't bring these back in. I should have saved them as a rack before we exported, but let's go back to their default one, which is this here. Are they mapped? Oh, they're not mapped, that's why. <laughs> okay, so let's try this again. We'll add a couple of random sounds onto here. Even if it's a bass loop, it doesn't really matter what we're adding here. You see, all of these are drum sampler. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, if you set up an instrument rack, did we do one from scratch here? No, I just wanna show you this. If we do a drum rack here and we do the same thing, we'll add the same sound here. This here is a simpler, it's not a drum sampler. So if we go here to the top of the drum rack, we can switch simpler to drum sampler. That's what we want. We switch it in that direction. It says replaced one instance with whatever. If you've got a bunch of sounds, it'll replace them all. And then that's what you can use to bring it on to the Ableton Move. So if we go back to this one here, that's all set up for us. And we right click here, export as move preset. There we go, simpler devices are not supported. We have to switch these over to drum sampler. And then we go back here and we should be able to export it. Okay, so I saved it as new drum rack here. And hopefully this one will work. If we go here, we choose, there we go. It's right up here, new drum rack. The speakers on here aren't that great, but you can see it here. You can change the pitch, play it whichever way you want. You can do this with your voice. You can do it with any sample. So that's how you set it up. We went from Ableton Live onto the Move Manager onto the move. I'm already thinking of so many possibilities that we can do with this. It brings some neat functionality to the move and hopefully that can help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.